<laughs> can't wait. Ah. Hello, world. <laughs> Kara St. Louis here, and that's Emily Moyer. She's back, and we've been waiting for her, and you've been asking for her. This is one of the most radically intense, finest minds that's operating right now. Otherwise, why, she wouldn't be sitting in my computer all the time. I love listening to her. I love listening to her because um, it triggers me. You know, it's, it's in these conversations that you end up, you end up at places that you never suspected you were going to go to, that you didn't know existed. Um, and I really admire and respect and love a person who can be extraordinarily courageous about their radical thinking, their anarchic thinking. And Emily's just gotten to the place where she's like, hey, you know, this is what I think. And I'm going to say it because there are people who are letting me say it. And it's been nothing but a privilege for me. So this is like Patreon patron series of lectures with Emily part four. She has done some magnificent work with, with programmable matter. She's also on to something new. <clears throat> so we're gonna let her we're gonna let her put it together in the way that makes sense to her. Hi, Emily. Hi, Kara. Thank you so much <laughs> for having me. Thank you for the kind words and um, it's great to be back. It's been a little while since our last one. Uh, yep. you know, where we're going with this today is a little bit different, although related. And it's taken me a while to kind of come to, I, I have to get certain kinds of inner confirmations about things before I decide I'm ready to talk about them. Like I've been playing with this, this version of things for a couple of months, but just a few weeks ago did I get the sort of intuitive confirmation that I needed to really go ahead um, with this. And so this is part four of our series on sugar as programmable matter. And yep. I'm calling it um, Inhaling Your Program, Creating a Hive Mind, and Breathing That Reality into Existence. And Boom. <laughs> Boom. So, <laughs> just, you know, this is, this is a little bit different than what we've been doing, but related. And actually, it brings us back almost full circle to where I got the idea for sh of sugar as programmable matter. And for those of you who have been listening to the series, you've heard me say this. And so I'm going to repeat it for those who maybe haven't, and that the first thing that sort of clued me into this type of thing was many years back, God, it had to have been around 2010 or something. I had a friend, a couple of friends, but one in particular that were very early on to ad adopting the vaping. And I noticed significant changes in this person's personality to the point that we, were, we almost stopped talking and hanging out. And it wasn't because I didn't care about this person or didn't like her anymore, but it was like there was something going on. Like there was some kind of haze and that really to a certain extent is still in place. I mean, uh, she's evolved a little bit. We've been able to sort of talk through some things and we're still friends and she's, you know, she's been a great friend to me and I love her, but there, I, I've noticed this with a lot of people who are vaping and I know that people are not going to like me for saying this. A lot of people in the alternative media, a lot of other hosts, they do it. This is not a personal judgment. I understand it can be hard to break habits and addictions. This is just what I notice. And um, mostly I say this because I love you all. And I, I, I would like, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't think it's good for you. Um, but I'm, you know, that's, it's, these things are all personal choices, but I noticed changes in the people that were doing it. That seemed, that seemed like they were in and, uh, you know, we know that everybody's under some kind of mind control, but this seemed a little bit different and, and somehow related. So one night when I couldn't sleep, I went down the rabbit hole looking up like e-cigarettes, mind control, vaping, mind control. And I found, this was like, again, many years back, I found a quote by Nikola Tesla that if I'd understood the importance of it at the time, I would have been sure to save it, but it seems to have been scrubbed from the internet since then because I cannot find it again. And the quote said something like, in the future, men will smoke these little machines. They will taste good and they will think they are cool and they will be under mind control. And so I thought, okay, that's interesting. And I just kind of left it at that. It was like, oh, okay. So these things are related to that. And, you know, I kind of, it kind of confirmed my suspicion on a certain level and I kind of moved on. And as, you know, time went on and more and more people adopted this, you know, trend uh, of vaping. And also as I came into my own awareness about um, health and diet, mind control, sugar, all of these kinds of things, what I understood about that, I started to think about, well, wait a second, 
Those vaping machines are charged, a lot of them, people charge them in the USB port on their computer, and it's a sugary crystal. It's, they're actually, I've done a little research, there's actually no sugar in that. It's, it's a glycerin, sort of crystalline kind of fluid, like oil, glycerin kind of fluid that has um, flavoring, but the flavoring is some of, is like the same flavoring that they use to create candy. Like there's this guy who comes into my work who smokes this cherry flavored one and it smells exactly like the gummy cherries that I used to be addicted to. I don't mean similar to, I mean exactly like the gummy cherries that I used to be addicted to when I was a sugar freak. Um, and so, you know, it's crystalline and the glycerin crystalline, it's sweet, um, and it can, like I'm coming to understand that not just sugar can hold information, but almost everything can. Water can be programmed. Pretty much anything we eat, consume, or come in contact with can be. Whether it actually is programmed or not is in question, but it's programmable. Sugar happens to be a uniquely um, good delivery system for that. Like, right, that's like, it's just like some things are better for it than others. But, you know, I became suspicious because of the fact that this thing is charged on the computer and then these particles are being charged as you inhale them. And I've, you know, wondered if there's like an application possibly running in the background when these things are charging on your computer, even though it's not saying that, we all know how this stuff works at this point, right? And so yeah. like I thought that was interesting. And then it was like, oh, you know, that's crystalline and sweet and candy flavored. Oh, I wonder if this could be the same with sugar. And that's really where I got the idea of sugar as programmable matter. And the more I've D delved into that. I've now shared this idea with all of you, but also with a few really good thinkers that I know and some people who know a fair amount about health and whatever. Like, I'm more and more comfortable that that is the case. Like, the way it's done or like how how intentional it is is up for debate. But the, there's no doubt that you know addiction to substances like sugar and and the kind of information they can hold and deliver act to control the mind of the person who's consuming them on a certain level. And right. I've worked with enough people now who I've helped, you know, them to try and come off of sugar who've noticed significant changes not only in their bodies but in their minds, their thoughts, and all sorts of things that I'm pretty comfortable that I, on at least some important metaphysical level, I'm correct about that. So anyway, so back to the vaping. So that was where that idea came from. And I started to observe... After we, as we've done this series, I started to really pay more attention to this vaping and the people around me who were doing it. And I had a con there's a kid at my work who does it, and I was having a conversation with him about it one time. And he had his little, um, you know, people blow that stuff all the time when they're smoking it, but he had his little jar of the stuff there. And I was like, "Can I smell that?" And I smelled it, and literally any thought that was in my head before I smelled it was literally gone. It was almost like a mind wipe, or like whatever it is, right? And it's, this one particularly smelled like the flavor was lemon pie. And it smelled like, um, if you guys remember those strawberry shortcake dolls from yeah. over here, and there was one named lemon meringue. It smelled exactly like that. And it also reminded me of scratch and sniff stickers. And I was like, okay, these are things like, it's a very like childlike kind of smell. Like all of these smells that people are doing with the vaping, they're not like you know, sophisticated, like, you know, sandalwood or jasmine-y kinds of smells or whatever. They're all like cinnamon roll, cherry flavor, blueberry pie. And it all has like that sickly sweet sort of, I can't just, I don't, I don't understand why somebody would want to smell like that. It kind of reminds me of that trend that for a while, like all of the bath gels smelled like cake and stuff like that. Like I was, I thought. Yeah. It was yeah. So, right. and then, you know, so I was thinking about that and then, I went to this party. Uh, I started throwing this idea about the vaping to people who aren't into alternative information like us. And some of them thought it was crazy, but some of them were like, oh, I can see that. That makes sense on a certain level. And some of them have their own, you know, Stockholm syndrome to it. So they can't see anything beyond the fact that they like it and they want to do it. Um, but I had this instance, and this is really where the basis of today's conversation is going to come from. I went to a party, one of my underground dance music things that I stay at all night. Um, back in November, and it was a great party. I had a wonderful time. The music was excellent, but this was the first time. I mean, the vaping has been going on at parties. Like, they don't let you smoke inside at a lot of parties, but some they do. This one, they do let you smoke regular cigarettes, but it's, <coughs> all of them allow you to vape inside. And the amount of people inside that were vaping, I think, outnumbered the amount that weren't vaping. Like, it was um, 
I couldn't tell the difference between when the dry, the dry ice, which I don't really think is dry ice. I think there's stuff in there that is, you know, in a sense, uh, altering or gassing people. But I couldn't quite tell where, when it was, they were, when dry ice was being blown as part of the visual effects and what was just the stuff from people vaping. It was everywhere. I right. could not find a single, like, I would find an area to dance where it wasn't like, didn't smell like that. I'd like get into my, start to sort of get into my groove. I like to close my eyes and go off into my own world when I dance. And then all of a sudden I'd smell great Kool-Aid. It, it was like, it was interrupting, interrupting my flow, like, or just like my ability to create my own mental space. And at one point during the party, I was telling my friend who I was there with, we were like standing in the way back of the party. And I just leaned over and sort of like, whispered in his ear, dude, I fucking hate that shit that everybody's blowing. I was like, right. I can't escape it. It's like, it's fucking awful. And this girl who was like maybe four feet in front of me turns around and is like, I can hear what you're saying. <laughs> I, was, I was like, I wasn't talking about you. She's like, you know, this is a big place. You can go somewhere else. And I was like, actually, I can't because everywhere I go, it's there. You know what I mean? <laughs> it wasn't, I actually wasn't really talking about her. Right. Um, <laughs> Well, it's interesting that she was that, um, you know, edgy about it. Anyway, well, before I lose, but well, before I lose a couple of things, I, you know, I just want to throw them into yeah. just so that maybe we can pick them up later or some other time. But you did say you did mention that you felt like just everything was programmable. Everything around us is programmable because because I would assume that's because we know that water is so reactive. Yeah. to everything that we say or do one way or the other. Okay. God bless water, you know, because it's taught us this Emoto and his work has taught us so much anyway, because, so I just want to, um, what I want to throw out is the thought that maybe we can program that we can program back. Maybe we can program back. Yes. You know what I mean? We're going to get, so, there. We're, gonna so, get we're going to get there. We're going to get there. The second thing I wanted to want to point out, because you're talking about sort of the difference between, cigarettes regular old tobacco cigarettes which i realize are cured in sugar that's how they it really is how they addict us is by curing tobacco and sugar but tobacco is the i think it's one of the two sacred plants i was talking about the other sacred plant yesterday and the day before at length but this one there i have been known and i will always and i will do it again when someone i love is vaping I will take the vape away from them and give them a pack of cigarettes yeah. because it's better for them to do that. They might as well smoke. And the fact of the matter is you were talking about um, how when you, when this cloud, this cloud of, of God, I don't even know what covers you and, and gets inside your, your, you know, your body, you, you go to this zone, to this nothing zone, to this block, this, this, you know, zombie zone. I used to smoke cigarettes. I smoked cigarettes for about 17 years. I haven't done it for decades now. Nobody loves to smoke but more than I do. Believe you me. Because that, that's just the kind of personality I have. It helped me think, Emily. I'm a writer. Okay. And when I was writing or when I was in college or when I was, it actually, that's one of the things I miss about it is that it, turned my brain i mean it really helped the intellect when i needed to use the intellect and i needed to concentrate what you're talking about is the exact opposite of that yeah, yeah? yeah. okay so i just wanted to throw those in before i forgot yeah. them we'll get to what you were talking about about water being programmable i'm to the spot point where i think that uh, uh i have three different kind of ideas or levels of thought about what we're living in and I think our environment and our atmosphere at this point is programmed and programmable, programmable and programmed. So we'll get yeah. there. Um, as far as what you just said about the smoking, I too, I was a smoker. I smoked cigarettes for 15 years. I really enjoyed listening to music while smoking cigarettes and driving my car while smoking cigarettes. And, um, you know, yeah. so it's not like I'm just like acting like, oh, people shouldn't smoke or whatever. Like, I agree with you at this, you know, I don't love the smell of tobacco either, but I don't feel disturbed by it in the same way that I feel disturbed by the vaping stuff. Um, and there was something else you said, what did I want to respond to? Um, also, yeah, tobacco. I'm just saying tobacco. Whoops, what happened? We just got, oh. you there? So you went, you, yeah, you went robo for a sec, but that's okay. Just start wherever you were. Okay, so um, 
Yeah, I understand that tobacco is a, a sacred plant. I mean, they use it in all sorts of vision quest kinds of ceremonies and whatever. So, you know, I agree with you like there, but yeah, I, I, at this yep. point, I think if people need to smoke, oh, I know what I was gonna say. If people need to smoke, better to smoke cigarettes. And the other thing I've noticed is a lot of people who never smoke cigarettes are vaping, right? Like a lot of people who are never into it. And in some ways I'm actually kind of surprised I didn't fall into it because I loved candy so much. But for some, there was something intuitively yeah. that was anti the vaping from the very first time I saw it. It just seemed like it seemed too good to be true. And it is, right? So um, the other thing I wanted to say, just to wrap back around to where it was, about that girl who got upset, the way she, you were right, the way she got, she was so, it was like she was going SJW on me. For those of you who don't pay attention to the more mainstream news, like, the social justice warriors are the people who like, you know, protest and scream and yell about everything and, you know, all the intersectionality and all that kind of stuff, right? So she was almost adapting that kind of like attitude and stance with me. She looked like she was ready to fight me. And anything that has somebody that emotionally wound up by it, like, wow, like that, I, I, was, I was kind of taken aback, whatever. So, you know, I'm not a fighting, I, I just was like, look, I wasn't talking about you, you know, move on. Um, but I was actually having a difficult time kind of enjoying myself because of it, right? So just, I'm only sharing this for the sake of the story, but, you know, I like to have a psychedelic experience once in a while, and I was enjoying, trying to enjoy one that night. And I have never had something, I've never had, had to struggle so hard to try and enjoy my psychedelic experience as I did because every time, like I like to dance and close my eyes and kind of get lost in the visuals behind my eyelids and go off into my own little world. Every time I would start to go, I'd smell that stuff and it was instantly pulled me out. Now for anybody who's ever had a bad trip, you know when you're having a bad trip, there's nothing you can do to stop that, right? You have to just wait it out. Like you have to, you can try and talk yourself through it, whatever, but you can't end the trip. Well, whatever's going on with this vaping stuff was like ending, like not allowing me to go where I wanted to go. Now, I'm okay with that. I'm like one of those people that like I had the experience that I needed to have because it pointed all of this stuff out for me. You know, I've had enough psychedelic experiences that if one is ruined by vaping, but there's a part of me that is like, will I ever be able to go to a party and enjoy a psychedelic experience again? Or am I going to be breathing, you know, cotton candy and blueberry muffins the rest of my life? Right, right. And Emily, have you ever known a smoker ever? to get pissed off because you tell them that, you know, oh, the smoke, I can't do the smoke or it, you know, no, usually a tobacco smoker, I've never known a tobacco smoker who didn't say, yeah, yeah, I know. Let me move over here. Or I have, I, I have known some, but, but like, have you? I mean, but like not, I've never been, but in, I can't even say that I've ever been so disturbed by tobacco smoke. Like it, the tobacco smoke is kind of an unpleasant thing, but it's like, Unless you're smoking it in a tight and closed room, which this was not. I was in a, a huge, a huge warehouse, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You kind of walk 10 feet away and it's not bothering you so much anymore. This right. goes everywhere. And the amount of smoke that is created, it's like, it's like a chemtrail. It's a, and I've said that before. It's like a chemtrail or a cloud cloak or whatever inside. And, you know, there's nothing you can do to avoid that if you're in the room with, and it's a let people allow it to happen at places where they don't allow cigarettes to happen and the distance that it travels is much farther i mean these people so one of the things that i have found that is a little disturbing about this like when i was looking into some things i i did some searching about so i'm trying to decide what order i should go in here all right so let's do this okay so i i've been playing what I was feeling like almost, okay, the other thing with these vaping machines, a lot of them have a blue light on them, the same thing that's on your Bluetooth, the same things that's on, that it's on like a lot of these um, wireless devices. And I actually think th this blue light technology is part of like a blue beam kind of setup or scenario. I think those blue lights carry certain kinds of information. They carry a certain band of information. And I think that the fact that they're on these vaping machines and these charging depots and stuff like that. I think that's part of carrying, you know, transporting the information into your body. You know, so look what's happening. You have a, the chart, look, the, this thing is charging on your computer. Let's just say, let's go totally buck wild here for a second. Cause that's what I do. Okay. Uh, yeah, do it. Go. Say that like there is an app running in the background and they are trying to use this to mind control or to program people. 
you charge it on the same computer that holds all of the information about your banking records, what your political beliefs are, your social activity, how you feel about your family, what kind of food you eat, what me medicines you take, what your spiritual beliefs are, all of that kind of stuff, right? So if there is an app running in the background that could be gathering information from your computer, and then you're charging this on there, I mean, it's basically like it, it could entirely be creating a program just for you. And I understand this is a little far out, sounds a little wild, but we're not in Kansas anymore. And if we wait to hear about this from the people who are doing it, uh, we're not, the, you know, the, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. So yeah. for personalized devices being charged on your personalized computer. Someone is, if, you know, if these, if, it could even just be as far like an advertising thing where the companies that make this shit is collecting data on you and figuring out how to make sure that they keep that they keep you addicted to their product. It could be that simple, right. Right. or it could be a full on MK Ultra, you know, or targeted individual kind of mind control thing. That's you're charging your thing, you're sending that charge into this liquid you are inhaling. And if you like these people, they're like it's. I mean, I watched these videos about how they alter and change their batteries and their smoking machines to try and get the biggest rips and the biggest hits and whatever. Like what on earth do you need all of that for? Right? Like if the idea is that it's supposed to be healthier for you than smoking or some sort of intermediary between smoking and quitting, like what is this? There's an entire culture around creating the best React, best acting, most effective, biggest hitting, whatever, smoking machines and which, how to make liquids that do it the best and whatever. And some of it, like literally, I found a video where they were talking about creating Tesla coils. Tesla coils to put into these things to make them the best batteries and to make them work the best and the longest. So that brings us full circle to the fact that Tesla said in the future, I mean, maybe he was so psychic that they would know that they would, that people would actually have not really care about using his technology for anything that could better mankind, but for using his technology to get a bigger hit off of your vaping machine. Like, That's insane. So these people, so, okay, so, you know, you're inhaling this stuff and looking for more and more efficient ways to do it. And if that's programmed and it's going in and literally reading, you know, like reading what's in your body or picking up the energies on your body, Let's say that's a program. Let's say that you are inhaling your program. You're breathing it in. You're mixing your energy with it, right? And then you're blowing it out. And other people around you cannot help but breathing that in. So they're breathing in your program and what you've added to it, right? The program that's been created for you, what you've added to it with your own energies, good, bad, or indifferent, or whatever. And then they're breathing it in. I completely had the thought that, like, what if this is one of the things that's being used to create a hive mind? Okay, because if you're, if you know, like these people breathe out the particles, we breathe them in, you know what I mean? And then, you know, if we're creating like a hive mind and, and creating like this could cause, like, for example, I was at a party and there's people there having this extremely intense, you know, experience with the music and the LED lights and the uh, a function one sound system, which is known for creating sort of transcendent experiences. So already there's enough, you know, if you listen to Mark Devlin's work and some of the things I've said about dance music, you know, there's already the danger of like psychotronic weaponry and sound frequency, you know, being used, you know, in mm -hmm. nefarious ways. So yeah. you have that going on and then you add this to, you add this to the mix. Right, you add this, and it was literally almost like I was watching there be created like a haze or a screen in front of me. So think Project Bluebeam, and also think chemtrails, which are about creating sort of a silver screen in the sky that they might be able to project reality off of. Are we being used, or not me because I'm not doing it, but I'm breathing it because I can't avoid it? You know, right. what I mean? are we? Is, is it somehow? I mean, if if there is mind control technology, the chemtrails, which we all agree that something is going on with that. What about this? This is ground level, and this is getting us to participate in our own program and into creating a synchronistic or a hive mind experience. I mean, you have people there that are now, where, when you're in a room with people you're, and you're having a spiritual or an energetic experience, you're already sharing air with them, which definitely, like, this is something that as we become more advanced in these things we study, we should be conscious of, you know, even our intentions when we breathe and when we're in a room with other people sharing energetic experiences. But now you put this into the mix, and if you really, if, if I'm right about this, and all this stuff are basically particles that can hold charge and carry information and, and have intent placed upon them and whatever, then, like, are we really just, like, 
for people who are doing it, create, you know, creating this. And for those of us who are, you know, in a situation where it exists being used to enhance it. Right. And so it, it's kind of this thing that like, it creates a ground level hive mind possibility. And then if you have people who are thinking that they're having spiritual experiences because they're in sync or they're in unison with somebody, then that's something, it's kind of like this idea of unity consciousness, which I don't like to me, that always has said hive mind, but for some people who are in the new age movement, that's something that, that feels good to them. But what if it's being even, I think the whole thing is a false thing, but what if within that it's even, just the act, the way it's actually coming together is being falsely created by basically breathing in the same program. Now, our, in, what we're in here, like I'm kind of in a phase where I'm starting to think we're in some kind of containment system, we're in some kind of simulation, so it's entirely possible that our atmosphere is already programmed and charged and is completely aware of us and every time we breathe it in, we're breathing in information from that simulation and every time we breathe out, it's gathering information about us to feed back a better, better program. But I think some of the things that chemtrails and stuff like vaping and sugar and all this kind of stuff is doing is creating an even further level of mechanization and programming to sort of, you know, tighten that down, right? Like we, we can all agree that like at one time the earth felt more organic than it does now, even if we were already in a program. It's becoming increasingly less organic, more, um, more mechanized, more technological, and more fake, right? Mm -hmm. Right, right. So, more artificial. So these are <laughs> all the things that were sort of flying around in my head, and I've been trying to think about how I could really speak about them in a way that that made sense, you know, and I recognize that a lot of this is just me expressing my thoughts, my creative thinking and my imagination and whatever, but that's what we do here with Carol. We were that's what you get to do, man. That's yeah. what you get to do. And I love it. And everybody loves, I mean, yeah, this throws the doors open for people to be able to speculate. Geez, it's what we do. We speculate. Yeah. Okay. So this, when you were, first of all, I think you're completely, I think you're really, again, onto something again. Um, the two things that I thought of uh, when you were speaking, though, is Rudolf Steiner said it's all in the breath. Everything's yeah. in the breath, okay? So people have been saying that for a long time. It's a bit um, inscrutable, you know, that's a bit cryptic. But it's not after Emily says what she just said, is it? Okay. The other thing is I interviewed my friend Dan Schreiber in Australia and he, he spoke at length about the human being. We digest our landscape. We digest everything around us. And it's really only when I say gross, I don't mean disgusting, but I mean, you know, this sort of large piece, you know, um, the grossest way that we do that is by chewing and ingesting an actual, you know, material thing that's around us, but our skin, our skin receives information from the sun. We digest that. It's like the sun, it's like, it's like going to the library, you know? So of course they've gotten between us and the sun, but what does that do? That leaves, does that leave space for them to, does that, you know what I mean? Does that, does that mean that they, um, that they very much know what we're capable of doing in that way and have just have figured out how to utilize that? get rid of the sun because the sun is feeding them. The sun is, is like this universal library and we're digesting that. If we can block probably what 40% of it by now, then we have all the space that we can use. You know, we can use what they can do that they're not getting anymore. We digest our landscape with our eyes, with our, with every sense. So, and that is a true thing. That is just a true thing about human beings. So what you're saying isn't even remotely far fetched. Okay, it's between that and, and the other bits of people's cosmology, like mine, where, it, where Steiner would say that it's all in the breath, it's everything's in the breath. Yeah, no, and Rudolf mm -hmm. Steiner definitely has lots of gems that we should all find modern ways to expound upon because he's not here anymore to do so. Yeah, it's translated to the modern world because he was yeah. talking to a very uh, somber crowd of, in some you ways, know. In some ways, he would have been a great, you know, he was a, you know, He's kind of like a Tesla of his genre. He was very ahead yes. of time. He is. He's an absolute yeah. avatar. Absolute avatar. People go after him, but whatever. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Don't so care. the other thing this has made me think about is like, what is the role of sweetness in our life, right? So even if you're a person like me and you've 
tried to eliminate sugar from your life, you find yourself quickly like, oh, when you find some new little xylitol or stevia candy, that's addicting too. Like, what is it about sweetness that takes us? Yes, I'm not saying people should never have it. I'm not saying that. Like, I cheat and have cocktails sometimes and whatever. We all have to, we're here, we're having this experience and whatever. But what is it about it that takes us out of our self and just becomes this constant driving towards wanting more, right? And it's also, think about like when you were little, you wanted like a sweet sugary treat every time you did something good. Um, so then when I had that experience where I sniffed that guy's thing and it was like a mind wipe and also when I was at the party and I couldn't concentrate on my own inner visions because I was smelling great Kool-Aid, like is it possible that sugar is used to create fog in the brain so we forget experiences is it, it, it is it to create haze over traumatic experiences for anybody who's been following along with this whole thing with the gymnastic scandal and the pedophilia which I've spoken at length about now one of the things they said about Dr. Larry Nasser is that they thought he was his their friend they gave when he would go they would go for their treatments he gave them candy right like is it entirely possible that candy or sugar or sweet, sn scratch and stiff snickers and whatever is acts like a mind wipe Right, like, I mean, think about how many like pedophiles and molesters and stuff like that give kids candy. And sure, we all want candy, but there could be a second. You know, we we all when we're kids, we want any treat, but there could be a secondary effect of it, and that like you go into that sugar high, and it really creates a malaise that makes it impossible for you possibly to recollect clearly what has happened to you. And I know people you know, myself on some level included, who are in their 30s, 40s, and 50s, and trying to uncover, trying to uncover certain traumatic events that happen to them, and, you know, block, bump up against this, like, thing where they can almost remember, but they can't quite, and I'm certainly not for creating things that weren't there, or going to, looking for things where there's right. no problem. Right, right. I've worked through enough of my trauma now that, like, I know when I bump up against a wall that is, like, an inserted kind of wall, and I just wonder, you know, if it, whether intended or not, but you have to think that like the master master manipulators would know what the all the metaphysical side effects of sweetness, whether it be actual sugar you're ingesting or just the smell or taste of sweetness. I mean, literally, you can't, I could not hold a psychedelic vision because I smelled grape Kool Aid. Usually, those kinds of visions are so strong, that whatever else is going on, if you want to get rid of the vision, you can't. And this was just like, cut right through it. So we have to ask questions about something that is apparently as addicting as this is because there's tons of people doing it, right? right. This, this uh, societal acceptance around it that was never there for cigarettes and I think this is actually more dangerous. And I think part of the reason oh, yeah. that those oh, yeah. is because people, like there's something for most people, for some, not for me, but for some reason for most people, this sweet smell, either they're attracted to it or they're, like being entranced by it and they're more right. accepting of it than they would were of, you know, what they figured like the ashtray filthy smell of cigarettes. I mean, sometimes people will come into my work after it's clear they've smoked a cigarette in their car with like the windows down or something and they smell like a fucking ashtray and I'm just like, ugh. but it yeah. doesn't do, it's not mind altering to me as the person who did not smoke a cigarette in the same way that I find some of this vaping stuff to be. Um, right. I do recognize because I was a cigarette smoker for 15 years that there's a level of mind alteration that goes on like when you take your first hit of the cigarette you get a little buzz and stuff like that but generally the person not smoking the cigarette didn't get that they just got the icky kind of smell so these were my thoughts and I've been sort of trying to arrange in my mind and I've done an okay job here today not as clear as I would like to be about it but sometimes as I work on these things over time they become clear yeah. Trying to think about how I wanted to talk about this in a way that made sense. I was waiting for some sort of, with a lot of these things I talk about, like because it's a combination on some levels of intuition and some level of research and observation, I wait for a specific kind of confirmation from universe. And when I get it, I know I get it and I know it's time to go. And that's what right. happened to me with, or, you know, early last summer with some of the stuff with sugar is programmable matter. And a few weeks ago when I was on my run, I got the, con the confirmation that I needed. And this is what I got. I was on my running trail, and this guy, it was like 90 degrees that day. And this guy was in front of me with a full sweatshirt on, hoodie, walking really slow, had weights in his hands. And he had a hoodie on, and this was what was on the back of his hoodie right here. So it might look backwards to you guys, but it says Vape Life, spelled with a Y. And then there was an X. And here we have a lightning bolt. Right, so that's like energy, energy, like the charging a battery. <laughs> yeah, 
cloud here, which I think of like creating like the cloud that we store information on, I think that's actually happening in our real atmosphere too. I think our atmosphere at this point is charged and programmed and is passing information to us and storing information about us. Like it is right. really possible that when they say we're storing information on the cloud, they actually are using our atmosphere somehow to do it. And that's why it's an endless amounts of, of storage capability. There's an omega sign up here, which we're going to go into in just a minute, but we all yeah. know what omega is. We know that that's part of certain MK Ultra programs. There's delta programming, omega programming. That's mind control right there. And then there's the vaping pen that they smoke, and they have it. It, it, some of it, it looks almost like a syringe right there, right? Yes. I would have thought that was a vaccine. Right? You are, so the way I look at it is that, you know, uh, the, the whole thing is basically – you're charging your thing. You're blowing your, your program into the air. It's, re, it's re, taking in that information to create a mind control program, and then you're injecting it into your system. So right. when I came home from that, I looked up Vape Life, and that it's spelled that way, and it's some company that makes these. But that's where I found all these videos about people trying to, trying to, trying to, trying to system for smoking this to get the biggest hits and Tesla coils and I can't think of a dumber use for Tesla's in br brilliant intellect and ideas than for this um, but then I started looking into Omega and I already knew about Omega but I wanted to look at all of the things that came up when I searched Omega and so yeah. the first thing yeah. that comes up obviously is Omega Swiss luxury watches yeah yeah so here we are. We all know if people can go listen to our recent episode of, on uh, time with Cliff High where we got into talking about sugar. There is a relationship between sugar. It's a crystalline substance. It holds information. It can be used as basically a time crystal in your body. And Omega is a time system. Okay, these are watches. They use them for timekeepers in Olympic Games, right? Uh, it says here, Omega is a Swiss luxury watchmaker based in uh, – Biel, Switzerland, Britain's Royal Flying Corps chose Omega watches in 1917 as its official timekeeper for its combat units, as did the American Army in 1918. Okay, so this is a combat, you know, a combat technology in a lot of ways, right? Yeah, These yeah, air watches yeah. are also able to go underwater. I've spoken at length about underwater training, breathing underwater, things like that. So these things are, are even if it's just tangentially, are related. And then we go to the meaning of the word and the symbol of omega itself, right? So I'm sorry, yeah. I haven't yeah. like, used my notes on my phone here. But even if you just do a search on Wikipedia of what omega means, omega is the 24th and last letter of the Greek alphabet. In the Greek numeric system, it has a value of 800. The word literally means the great O or the great, or, uh, the, um, it's the great O as opposed to Omicron, which means the little O. So this is the big O. And if, you know what I mean? Like whatever that is, you know, as our world, our world, the globe, is it a sphere, whatever, it could be that. I don't know. In phonetic terms, in ancient Greek, um, uh, the Greek, it is comparable to the vowel of English raw. In modern Greek, it represents the mid-back rounded vowel. It is transcribed to simply O. As the last letter of the Greek alphabet, omega is often used to denote the last or the end or the ultimate limit of a set in contrast to alpha. So we know about alpha programming, and this is omega. It, is, this, is this possibly like the la their last, the last thing they have to get in place to have the full sort of control system set? Right? Okay, so in physics... Hold on. In physics, it's the name for the inverse of ohm. So, right, ohm is like something people use in uh, meditation and, you know, breathing exercises and things like that. So it's the opposite of that. Uh, in, in chemistry, it's oxygen-18, which is a stable isotope. Um, let's see. In statistical me me mechanics, this refers to multiplicity in a system. So if we think about mind control, right, uh, we talk about alters and multiple personalities and stuff like that. That's there. Um, let's see. Hold on. I'm looking for the... In differential geometry, the space of uh, the differential forms on, man of, on a manifold or certain degree is usually within a superscript, a variable for a two-dimensional region in calculus, usually corresponding to the domain of a double integral. So this all, to me, talks about, like, multiplicity programming, right? Like, being able to create, like, different options. Um, in combinatory logic, this is the looping combinator. 
right? So we hear people talk about how time seems to be on a loop. We keep looping back. Could this actually be like distorting time, right? This like, literally think about this. We people have noticed all these like Mandela effects and distortions and time and whatever. It's been happening a lot in the last seven or eight years. That's vaping has been around for that. I was going to say, say if that's concurrent, concurrent. You know. uh, a notation related to the big O notation described the asymptotic behavior functions, right? Like that to me, that, that just that, that sentence is disturbing. Um, it's the badge of the Supreme Court of the United Kingdom. It was the mission patch for STS-135, the last mission of the space shuttle program. It is the logo of the God of War video game based on Greek mythology. Um, the logo of the heroes of Olympus. The logo of the Ultramarines in Warhammer 40,000, which I'm assuming is like some of these are video games. Yeah, um, maybe, huh? Right? It's um, the logo of Primal Brudon in the version mascot of Pokemon, Omega Ruby. Remember the Pokemon game that everybody was, you know, losing their shit over? I mean, it goes on and on and on. It was the symbol yeah. of, the, of the resistance movement against the Vietnam era draft in the United States. It's yeah. the year or date of someone's, it can be used as the year, to denote the year or date of someone's death. Right? It is used to refer to the lowest ranked wolf in a pack. In eschatology, this, it is the symbol for the end of everything. Oh, God. Okay? So this is what, like, this is the symbol that's being used in conjunction. Would with, you read the, would you, Emily, before we, before you lose that thread, would you read the geometry one again? Yeah, let me see if I can go back and find it. Hmm. In differential geometry, the space of differential forms on a manifold of a certain degree, usually within a superscript, a variable for a two-dimensional region in calculus, usually corresponding to the domain of a double integral. If anybody is smart with geometry or calculus, you want to get back to us with exactly what that means, but it well, just means something. Yeah. yeah, but what I hear is two dimensions. I hear two dimension, the two-dimensional flat screen yeah. bring us back down out of three and away from... Oh, certainly away from four or five or six or any of these other yeah. places we're trying to go, right? And yeah, it's, cre yeah. it's creating a screen. A screen is a two-dimensional experience. That's right. So it's all me, about bringing us back to two. Any, okay, in molecular biology, the symbol is used as a shorthand to signify a genetic construct introduced by a two-point crossover, right? That okay. some, for some reason, and I'm not saying I'm right about this, that makes me think of Cliff Carnicom's work with the cross-domain bacteria and Morgellons. I could be totally, like, that could have nothing to do with it, but that's sort of the <laughs> inner ping I get. Um, there, was the, there was an omega particle in the Star Trek universe. Yes, there is. Oh, yes, there is. Um, let's see. So that's, those are some of the things that came up just on a Wikipedia search of Omega. So why that is part of the logo or advertising for one of the main companies with this vaping stuff, I don't know. Right, but right. Um, if you look at, you, people can go look at Delta programming, Omega programming, Alpha programming. These are all things that are, part, are realistic parts of MK Ultra programming. Um, right. And so I think, you know, with something like vaping, just like with any of these Bluetooth, Bluetooth technologies and with the consumption of sugar and whatever, this is a way to deliver mind control to the masses. And this one is particularly effective because it doesn't only affect the people that are actually doing it, but everybody who shares space with them. And so, you know, for me, this brings up, like, I kind of don't want to go any place where they're doing that. You know, like, and uh, I love going to parties. Like, I love going to dance right. and whatever. Right. But, like, you know, I, I already know that I would have eggs thrown at my face if I guess <laughs> that maybe people not allow that inside the party, right? Make your own party. Make it a vape-free zone, right? You can't come in with your vape vapor. Or what is it, a vapor? Is that what they call them, a vapor? I think it's a vape machine, a vape, vape, vape machine, or a vapor, a vape, no, not a vapor, a vape machine, or a vaping cigarette, or... Yeah, you know, I, I haven't, I haven't, I'll have to sleep on this, you sleep on it, but I'm doing a, a lot of delving right now, I'm, I'm schooling myself big time, and really fast in the endocannabinoid system, mm -hmm. because I think that, well, I, we're learning that every cell in our body has a receptor, right. all of it, and, and that we cannot be mind controlled if our endocannabinoid system is on, 
if it's functioning, that it's responsible for homeostasis. Is, this is what it's looking like, that it is foundationally responsible for homeostasis and that um, it doesn't take much to turn it back on at all. It just reacts like that, boom. So when you're talking about something like this, you're talking about smoking something, aren't you? You're talking about breathing. You're talking about taking something into yourself that's, you know, I can't make a logical statement. I can't make an if, if then, you know, statement out of this yet. But this is all going to go together. My intuition tells me that this is all going to go together. Yeah, no, I mean, that I'm mostly operating from intuition here. Yeah, of course. Love of course. Your back, you know, input, constructive this is, criticism, yeah. closing thoughts, as long as they're respectful and all that kind of stuff from people, because these are just the things that, like, occur to me as I, you know, become increasingly aware of what's going on around myself and around all of us. Um, if what you're seeing is right about the endocannabinoid system, that I'm very concerned about the fact that a lot of people, um, rather than you know, ingesting it in the traditional way of smoking it or by eating it or or whatever, are there there's you can buy the little liquefied forms of the cannabis and smoke it. So maybe the yeah. liquefied way is not you know I know that they have vape, like these vapor smokers where you can actually put the bud of marijuana in. Yeah. And smoke. Yeah. Don't go for the one that's liquefied. Some of the liquefied ones have this flavoring and stuff like that too. I mean, literally, that could be something that accompanied the the push for legalization as a way to sort of send it off in a wrong direction by getting people to you know consume it and attached to this stuff or attached to sugar. You know, like you can yeah. do you can do edibles without having them in just baked goods full of a lot of sugar. You can you There's know. You can eat, mix them with coconut oil and just consume it that way without sugar. So, you know, I, cause I would, I would, again, this is just me guessing kind of going along with what you're saying that if the idea is that we need to have the endocannabinoid system receive the, receive the, the cannabis, then perhaps some of these things create like a wall or a block. So you still feel the effects yep. stoned, but it's not actually doing to your brain and your mind what the possible, you know, and, and it just so right. understands, I'm a person who believes you should be able to do whatever you want with your body. I have mixed feelings about cannabis. I know what Kara's feelings are, and I totally respect them, and I'm not anti them. I'm just not sure. My, you know, I'm not sure I see a lot of people who are really into cannabis and have it their entire lives sort of wrapped up with it that, to me, don't they seem like they're under total mind control. So I don't know, but I also see other people who it has done tremendous things for their health and has saved them from health issues. So this is a personal decision for people to make, but I think it's important yeah. that we all understand what's really going on with this. That, see, that's the thing, Emily. We have to unpack this. It isn't anything like what we think it is. It's They've got it. They've already got it by the short hairs, okay? Yeah. And so I did a show with Mike Williams last night, but my level of understanding right now is primary. Okay, I'm working really hard to understand it because I think it's one of those baseline things. You know, you get a scant handful of things like like food, like what you're talking about. These things are foundational and we need to understand them and we need to unpack them because they have been they've been um, tied in knots, you know, and, and boy, are they being used against us. But, you know, Danny Arnold McKinney is doing a lot of really super good work on this right now. Yeah. And every show I've been on lately, I have said, and I've told her I'm doing this, sending, I'm sending people back to her, her uh, channel because especially there's a show on endocannabinoids that she has two women you may want to get a hold of. And Don, 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 Don Hart is. A Don Hart, and I can't remember the name of the other woman. The other woman is very informational as well. I think, I can't anyway. Know you're Don, I, I know who you're speaking about. Don, Don yeah. is a friend of mine, and Don and I have had, she's, she's helping to educate me on some of this. And Yes. I've it's, not what you, it's not what we think it is. I mean, foundationally, I am very pro-cannabis because I got tired of watching children die yeah. because they were drunk, okay? And you lose all, you lose all control or a decision-making capacity and if there's anything at all that's already wrong, like you're depressed and lots of children, lots of children are so fragile right now in that way. Alcohol does nothing but Depress you. hurt, <laughs> you know? So this is the first reason I'm pro that because I'd much rather see people, these children sitting around in a circle smoking a joint 
you better believe it, baby, because they're safe. They're safe that way. They're not behind the wheel of a car. Okay. And so that's where I started. But, but I have to say that Emily is expressing some absolutely reasonable discernment. You cannot ever just latch on to something and say, this is good. This is the good one. Uh, because everything's been gotten a hold of. Everything's been weaponized against us. And so yeah. we have to work really hard to yeah. put together an entire array of things that like were, that are both helpful to you and mitigating the harm from other things. And it's not fair that we have to do this, but in certain a certain sense, like being God, no. responsible about what we do with our body is going to prepare us for the day when maybe the controllers are gone and we're actually able to do what we want to do with our lives. And oh, we, we will. We'll get ahead of them. Uh, and uh, the evidence of that is that it's so damned hard to contain us. Yeah. And the last, thing I, been, to, yeah. The last yeah. thing I wanted to say about this, and this goes to some of what you were just saying, um, the guy who comes into my work who smells like gummy cherries, who does the vape, he's a super nice guy. I really like him. I enjoy talking to him. We have a lot of interesting conversations. He... Um, he was a recovering drug addict. He's a recovering drug addict. He's been clean for a very long time. And the other day he had a seizure and he said, I said, well, have you ever had them before? He said, well, I used to have them when I did drugs, but I thought it was because of the drugs and I've been clean for a long time now. And I don't know why I had them. I said, well, what if it's because of the vaping machine? Because you were doing that then and you're doing it now. What if it wasn't really because of the drugs? What if it was because of the vaping? And I'm not saying it wasn't because of the drugs because we all know those things can do that. But yeah. this, just the um, act of inhaling so much stuff sometimes, like if you, you know, if you take in too much air, you know, like literally that can cause like busting of you know, brain aneurysm kind of stuff and whatever. I just yeah. posed a question to him, what if it's from this? And I would be interested, I haven't had a chance to look into this, to see if there's been any other cases of people who are otherwise healthy but are vapor into vaping having, you know, late occurrence in life seizure, you know, seizures or epilepsy or things like that. You know what I mean? Yep. Uh, it doesn't seem like, especially if, 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 if it is it programmed, having all that information flow into your brain, like in one huge breath, that could probably right. overwhelm the system of your brain. Right, right. I understand that we're out on, you know, a, a very far limb here, but I think we need to consider all of these things because they're spraying shit in the sky for agendas that are this complex. Why wouldn't they get us to participate on the ground? Oh, I'm sure they, I'm sure that's the best. That's just like their wet dream to get us to do and it to ourselves. It, and people enjoy it and love doing it and, and want to create yeah. And cultures and cults around it. Like I actually think that just like I've said about CrossFit and Herbalife and whatever, I think vape yeah. life is a cult. You know what I mean? People like, you know, you walk into some of these vaping stores and if you're like, you know, it's like you walked into like another world. You know what I mean? It's like all dark in there and they have to look, look I've walk. never been in I've never been in one of those. But I walked into ones and it's like you're going into some sort of like, you know, otherworldly den or something like that. It's black and there's blue lights everywhere and um you know, unfortunately, I think it's a, a masterful thing to go along with, you know, electronic dance music and underground party scenes and things like that. That is already a culture that is based around worship of, you know, combination of art and technology to promote transhumanism. This is also that, guys. This is part, if you're willing to smoke something electronic, if you're willing to take in those kinds of charged particles into your body, I mean... Yeah. If they if they're pushing for, if they, if they are programming it, what if we're like being turned into androids based on what we're breathing that charged on our Android computer? Dude, it's all in the breath. Yeah, they, this is what they're saying. It's all in the breath. Hey, Rudolph, where are you when we need you? I wish he could be. <laughs> he could join us for a conversation. Well, I've been rereading his. You, you do that. You know, you read it. You, it's applicable to what, where, whatever you know you're doing at the time, whether it's beginning teaching or whatever. And then 20 years later, you pick it up and you go, God damn, he's talking about now, yeah. you know? Yeah, same with, same with Tesla. Same with, right, you know, Tesla too, yeah. If you go back and listen to like the comedy of someone like Bill Hicks from the 90s, you would think he was talking about now. He's long dead. You'd think he was describing everything that's happening now. So there's some of these people who just their brilliance exists completely outside of time. They're trying to tell us. Imagine what it was like to be them. You know, yeah. how, how lonely was that? Yeah. At least we have some kind of community where we can come together and we can speculate and we can go out on those limbs. I think being out on the tippy toppy limb is the best place to be. So I, I want do. To, I want to end this in a positive place. Yeah. 
let's swing back around to what you brought up in the beginning. Um, this has also opened my eyes to we have a level of power and control that I didn't really, not that I didn't recognize before, but if everything is programmable or programmed, and if at this point, if we're in some kind of situation where our atmosphere and our water and all this kind of stuff is charged and programmed, we need to start being really careful, clean, and clear with our thoughts, our intents, you know, whatever. If you're, you yes. know, talk, when you're, when I'm out on my run in a good spot of nature where I'm away from like all the chaos part, I talk to it. I talk to the atmosphere. I talk to the earth or whatever, you know what I mean? And I sort of try and communicate with it. Um, you know, when you do if people for people who do meditation or breathing exercises and whatever, use that opportunity to blow your positive intent into existence, right? Use your words and your breath yeah. Yeah. to, you know, and, and, and program them with your individual thoughts. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fight the hive mind, right? Like check your own, you know, we all, I don't recommend avoiding public places or cutting yourself off from humanity. I'm still going to go to my parties and whatever. Build, don't build a Faraday cage, build a kind of a mesh net that is sort of, you know, your energetic wall to tr keep out things that are harmful. You know, let some of the experience in so you can understand what it is, but sort of create, you know, a barrier that you're not willing to let it go past and then use your opportunity to breathe your thoughts, your feelings, your will into existence in a way that is, you know, the antidote for some of this other stuff. Um, you know, use... That's you, right. That's, that's... You can use... You're just talking about our magic again there, Em, which is one yeah. of the most important things we need to be talking about right now. Use, use, you can use crystals, you can use certain energetic tools, like I have some of these cool, um, these are crystalline energy tools, right? One is for neutralization of energy and one is for charging. I use these things to set my intent into things or to clear. Like when I come home from a party, I use this to just clear everything off me, you know? So you can use tools, but also just more than, you know, th these things like crystals and these tools, they're really just things for us to focus our minds and our intent on to sort of help amplify things. You don't even need that stuff, right? You can use it to amplify as tools, but just your own consciousness of what you're taking in, what you're breathing out, and what your intent is for those things is, you know, really important. And I think maybe early on in my life and even early on in my, like, coming to terms with reality, I didn't give those things enough weight. Um, and the reason that they have to deploy all these things against us is because they know the power that we have. And so, you of know, course. absolutely. You, know, you can also use some of these kinds of, you know, like with, you know, same thing with food. Like you can, when you sit down to your meal or whatever, you can tell what, you know, with your healthy food, you can tell it what you want it to do with your body. You know what I mean? And some of these things are, you know, proven. I mean, you've looked at the, um, what's his name with the water? Emoto? Emoto. Emoto. Yeah. Well, everybody go look at his, uh, you know, experiments with water and, you know, the way you can talk to water and affect how it, you know, talk, you know, you, you know, drink high quality water and structure your water, charge it with your thoughts, your energies, if you, you know, whatever kind of things, you know, there's people who use, I watched an experiment where somebody had organite and they yeah. took a cup of water and they froze it without the organite and they took one and they put the organite in there and froze the water and it had like all this fabulous geometric pattern and whatever, just like cymatics. You can look at cymatics and how, you know, harmonious rhythms create beautiful sacred geometry and discordant rhythms just create a mess on the plate. So let's think about these things when we're setting our intent or, you know, using our create imaginations or ideas or whatever. So that's pretty much what I have to say for today. Um, okay. Yeah. That's a lot, Emily. How do you like us now, world? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's brilliant. It's all, and you know, the thing is, it's all, it's all coming together. All of these strands, yeah. they're all coming together now, right? They're yeah. all coming together right now. Um, Emily's right. You have, you believe that if you, the reason you have to run so hard. Oopsie, what happened? Where did you go? What happened? Where did you go? Okay, I just lost Kara here. Let me see if I can get her back. I'm gonna pause it. Okay, folks, we just had like an interruption. Kara's computer crashed and she is not able to come back up. So I'm just gonna finish this off for everybody here. Um, it's interesting when we were talking about our own power, that's when her computer crashed. Anyway, the last thing I wanted to say before we finish 
is um, I wanted to thank Kara for having me. I love doing these with her. And uh, guys, please support Kara on her Patreon page and uh, subscribe to her YouTube channel. Attend her lectures. They're awesome. And you can catch me at offplanetradio.com. Our YouTube channel is Off Planet Media. Support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash offplanetmedia. And the last thing I wanted to say is that I'm also now available for holistic wellness and conscious lifestyle consultations. Uh, the idea basically being to use your choice about your choices about your body and your lifestyle to work through your trauma and help get you unstuck. And um, yeah, you can contact me on Facebook, Emily Moyer. I'm easy to find. And if you don't like Facebook, you can contact me through email at technobrat21 at gmail.com. Thank you, Kara, for having me, and I'll see you guys all soon. Bye-bye.